Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. So if you're thinking like the market action for this year seems kind of weird, uh, you're probably not alone. I've been thinking about this for a while now, and I was trying to think of like a like a theory. And I think we're probably heading into like the grandmother of all bubbles. And of course, this is the working theory. Uh, things will probably change over the course of the year. Uh, I wasn't expecting such a really good quarter uh first quarter so far um but you know you know of course like things could change uh maybe like the fed will hold off on on cutting interest rates so then you know that might give like the market like some breathing room and of course like there'll be probably be like a pullback or maybe a correction uh but you know so far i think like 2024 seems unusually good but you know but uh, you know there's always a chance for a drop and I also wanted to thank uh, this kind supporter for uh, like the super thanks. So I hope, hopefully, this is a kind of like a good way to thank this person. Uh, so I, I hope you're okay with this. Um, I think for in general, bull markets feel great, but people get complacent, and then people get extra greedy, and then they turn good markets into a bubble. And I'm hoping that this isn't the case, but it, it could be. So again, this is just a working theory. But you always have to think ahead and then like, well, what happens when it pops and things start falling apart? So even though like bull markets feel good, uh, please don't get cocky. Uh, like for example, uh, like recently you've seen me stop out of like triple QY and TSLY. Uh, I had like this this uh, naive assumption that, you know, the, the good times will keep rolling on, but obviously that wasn't the case. And it's a good way to kind of like stay humble so in a way i'm glad like i kind of got stopped out so this way i can reevaluate like the high yield um, option etf space as a whole and how this relates into like this working theory so i think it's good to take profits off the table occasionally uh, in my case having a stop loss by itself uh, I, I think it wasn't enough um, even though like overall uh, i stopped out on like a a, a small win a small win isn't good enough, like especially when the markets are performing this well. Uh, I think the only thing I did well was that you know I had other positions on, so that I can kind of like take advantage of both whatever you know whatever the high high yield options ETF can offer, and then also like get like the the nice um, capital appreciation as well. And then like for myself personally, I'm preparing hedges uh, because right now since like volatile delete is relatively low um it won't be these trades won't be perfect but at least you have something so you know in case like things go south um i can monetize the hedges and then plow it back into the portfolio but of course like you know being early uh, sucks because like you know you, you're gonna have like a drag on your portfolio so uh, and I also wanted to kind of share that, you know, there could be like signs of trouble because like sometimes there's always like this mismatch between like the underlying economy and the like, the stock market because like the stock market seems really good. And like, but then like in real life, like, you know, just like walking around, I'm seeing like a lot more like storefronts um, with like, you know, like for rent signs. Um, I used to see a lot more, um, job openings and then they're, they're not here anymore. And well, I mean, you know, obviously if the store goes goes out of business, then you know, you know, there's there's no need for help, right? Um and then in the past I think it used to be like these predatory like payday loans uh, used to get a lot of the attention. Um thankfully they don't make the news as often. But I think like people are still, you know, they, they need a little bit extra like after like their paycheck. Or until like the their paycheck comes, um, the, the, I still, I still think that like some folks are having like trouble at making ends meet uh, just because of inflation, and you know like the pace of like your, your, your paycheck, isn't catching up to like inflation obviously. Um, and then I've also seen like, uh, like this interesting article about like pawn shop inventory increasing, so people are resorting to. Kind of like hacking their like you know family heirlooms or like anything that has like a value to it and you know just taking the cash and they're probably not going to pay it back so this is probably a bad sign um and i you know just 
I mean, this is anecdotal, but I passed by like a a local pawn shop, and I'm seeing like more more stuff in like the you know like the window area. So I guess like just casually observing, like there's definitely a lot more stuff. Uh, I guess if you want like you know to pick up some some cheap items, and I've linked like this uh, article uh, in the description below. And then there's also, I think there's a, a lot of ticket mentality happening um, across all, like all age groups. And this is kind of sad uh, because like they have a great payoff obviously, but you know, the odds are gonna be horrible. And then I don't know if you've also noticed this yourself, but like these mega millions and like these Powerball, like the jackpots, like they've been hitting like the, like, I feel like they're hitting like the billion dollar level a lot more often now. So I don't know if it's just me, um, but I guess maybe it's just like the sign of the times. Uh, I think people, you know, they're they're desperate, um, and it's fortunate. Unfortunately, this is like hitting like the working class a lot more. Um, so you know, I, I hope I'm just imagining things, but I, I'm probably not. Uh, and then you also see like these small signs of like degeneracy, like kind of creeping into like society as well. Well, at least like U.S. side, uh, I don't know how it is in other countries. Uh, sports betting is starting. Well, I mean, it's I guess it's been pretty popular for about at least four years now. I guess like you know, back in 2020 when people were cooped up, so I'd, you know, I, I guess like they had nothing better to do, so like you know, gotta entertain yourself somehow, right? And then I, I think unfortunately this bad habit kind of like kept going, and then I guess like kind of semi-related is like. There's a lot more like options gambling I've noticed, uh, especially amongst like the younger crowd. Um, even you know, w I guess within my own social circle, um, people uh, you know throwing around like like option terms like they're nothing. Um, so I'm thinking like this is probably normalized now. Uh, but there's you know obviously a, a dark side to all of this. Um, so I've noticed like this also like another article that I just happened to come across on Reddit. So I've also shared this in the description below. Uh, since zero DTEs are definitely getting more popular, uh, of course, there's going to be like fake gurus that try to uh, capitalize on this. Um, so of course, I, I've shared this post. Uh, hopefully, they, uh, this is still still up um, by the time you watch this. Uh, so there, I guess this, this is a scammer. They actually put zero dash dt dot com, and this person lost a million plus of of client money and was sued. So I'm I'm glad like they caught this person. Um, I mean I guess there's no need to go to like any fake gurus. I mean there's plenty of zero dt ETFs out there, and there'll probably be more. So yeah, I guess there's no need to, you know, I guess go with these kind of clowns. But I'm glad like they 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 caught this person, so I'm hoping you know this will send a lesson to other would be scammers. Um, and then you, you kind of see like the opposite side too. So this person allegedly made like a million euros in the stock market. So I guess congratulations. But this is kind of bad in a way too, because like obviously this these won't be like typical results. Um, for every one person that wins, like there's going to be probably be at least like ten that that lost. Um, and then you're starting to see like you know things like the like memes. Uh, I wouldn't call these investments. I'm obviously I put these in quotes for a reason. Uh, so I mean even Reddit, which is pretty ironic, has like its own ticker symbol now. Um, DJT. Um, of course, like once the options came out, like people just kind of like piled in. So I don't know how if uh, this type of like meme activity will continue. But I'm guessing it will. Uh, so, you know, uh, so pe people, uh, please be careful out there, uh, because then you see, like, obviously, like the, the dark side of all of this. Uh, this unfortunate person. I mean, I mean, I, I really feel sorry for this person. Um, I think it, this person is in a really bad headspace right now. Uh, so I hope this person gets help because this is not good, and this is just kind of like what I see, like almost every day. On like certain Reddit um, uh, subreddits, and you know this is bad. I mean, you you have like these heavy losses in a bull market. I mean, well, I mean, you know, I just feel bad for these people. Um, 
And then like on YouTube, I guess it's just like in my feed, but I've noticed a lot more YouTubers are starting to promote leverage and leverage ET ETFs. And I'm going, oh boy. Uh, well, first, like leverage by itself isn't always bad. I think if you use experimentally and judiciously, uh, leverage can be profitable. But of course, like people aren't going to use this sparingly or judiciously. Uh, I think people are wanting to kind of like uh, for speculative, uh, very speculative uh, positions. Um, and it, it'll probably work for a little bit, uh, but then like at some point, like things will blow up. And then there's also like this other thing where um, I'm hearing a lot of like these like uh, certain like podcasts, like they they're saying like, oh, well, the bull market can continue for quite a while because there's, a, there's plenty of liquidity on the sidelines. On the surface, this this seems to be true. Uh, there are allegedly there are trillions sitting on money markets waiting to be, to be deployed. I'm not so sure about this because one, you don't know if like the source of like the where the source of the money market funds are coming from. You don't know if it's people like if they took out a loan or they're they're training on margin or whatever, or like if it's cash that they save from like jobs, businesses, and productive means. Then I could probably see that. But when you see like the mismatch between the economy and like the stock market, eh, I, I don't know if it's totally like cash from what I would assume are like legitimate uh, pr um, sources. So, you know, just, just be aware of that. And I, you know, I think we've seen this horror movie before if you're kind of like in my age bracket. So if you're like an elderly millennial or like maybe a young Gen Xer, um, you know, you've probably felt like the pain before uh, from like the 2008, 2009 like financial crisis. And, you know, I guess, like, comparatively speaking, um, I guess when you compare it against, like, other crises in the in the past, like, like the 1987, like, stock market crash, and then, like, other, like, financial panics from like, the past, like, I guess it wasn't, you know, it, it was pretty, pretty jarring. Uh, I would say that was, like, the probably, like, for our generation, like, the, like, the most horrible thing that we felt. I guess, like, you can also make a case for 2020 but then like the there was such a crazy rebound after that that i you know i guess it's kind of debatable but i guess like we should get ready for like the lousy remakes and get ready for awful sequels uh, i'm sure there's going to be like some bad stuff happening in the, sometime in the future i don't know exactly when but it's not a bad idea to, to maybe start preparing but of and then i also want to kind of uh, propose like a counter argument to this uh, theory too. It's always good to maybe not to get not to get too crazy on like either bear or, or bull case. Um, so allegedly the the stock market leads the economy. So if this is true, then I guess it would kind of make sense that maybe the right now like the economy is kind of lagging behind, and the you know the stock market might indicate that oh well things are probably better than you think so like personally speaking i hope this is the case but you just never know and then maybe there really is something to like the ai crypto and high yield hype and maybe they will usher in like a new utopia so i'm hoping that's the case but you know you can't invest on hope so i guess like the takeaway is that like in a bubble especially if i think this is like a grandmother of all bubbles there will both be opportunity and then there'll be peril. And of course, like this is just my opinion. Uh, again, this is just a working theory. So I guess as the year rolls on, we'll see if I'm correct or not. Um, and then you also, you might have like different goals and preferences and time horizons and all that. So this is just like for like the next few years, what I think is going to happen. Uh, of course, like this is not like sell everything and hide in a bunker. Like if we really are in a bubble, like I want to try to grab as much as I can and then like, you know, stockpile cash so that like if something, if there's like a dramatic drop, then you can kind of buy it back at a cheaper price. And then, you know, hopefully things will recover after that. But, you know, maybe I'm just thinking too much. Uh, so, you know, just make a watch list of like potential bargains. Because like right now there, there's some stuff that I 
that I kind of want to buy, but they they might have uh, ran ahead a little too too far. So I'm thinking like maybe something like the energy sector might be like the next place where logically, if if this AI and and crypto and like maybe uh, humanoids and all this kind of like future sci-fi stuff if it really happens then of course like you're going to need an energy source right and then you're going to need uh infrastructure to support that right so maybe that's like some food for thought uh if you like this type of content uh please consider giving this a like uh just subscribe if you can and i really appreciate like the super thanks uh so this might be like, like a nice way to kind of bridge the gap until uh this channel gets you know i guess a thousand and one and then after that, maybe it'll finally get monetized. Um, so, and then also, uh, like I'll try to answer all like you know questions uh, as soon as I get them. But you know, in case I can't get to them, I apologize. Uh, but I guess like if if you have like a reasonable request or topics, um, of course, like the super thanks will get like priority first. So and then I'll and then after that, I'll try to work on like the other questions. Uh, so thank you for your support. And I'll hope to see you in the next video. Bye now.